melting pot with every sort of folk. From very rich to very broke, just picture any kind of cloak. You'll catch him lurking there. The people who live on Market Street, they often do what you would. It's crazy around that neighborhood. They love to bicker. It's neat how they compete down on Market Street. People react to economical facts And like the Sunday comics They're unprepared for most of the things That circumstance brings The people who live on Market Street You gotta see what they do There's someone who does things just like you It's economics we treat So take your seat Here comes Market Street Here comes Market Street Market Street. Market Street. Home of me. Ta-da! Jeffrey Washington. And a lot of other people you'll be meeting. Market Street is a neighborhood with all kinds of people. Maybe you know some place like it. I mean, here on Market Street, we're the same as most people. <laughs> that is, we're different from each other. Individuals with different backgrounds, <laughs> different skills, different values. <laughs> Still, we have some things in common. Like people everywhere, we try to lead our own lives, to do what we think is right for us. <laughs> but one thing we all have to live with, we live in a world where goods are scarce, where there's scarcity. Hey, Jeffrey, say we got some dynamite bargains here. Look around, you just look around. If you took everything we have here on Market Street, or even in the whole world, all the things we want, all the trees and food and airplanes, all the hospitals, clothes, education, everything. There'd never be enough to satisfy everyone. Ooh, carrot cake. How's four dollars? I want it. I'll pay five. You could buy the cookies. Here's six dollars. You buy the cookies. Sold. At that price, I make some more. Oh. Now that's a dress. I saw it first. Oh, it wouldn't fit you. Let me try it uh, on. Let's go. Uh, uh, that's a real nice dress. I think maybe my wife better keep this one. We all want more of the same things. It's human nature. We want more things. Quantity. We want better things. Quality. Not only for ourselves, we also want more for others. How are you doing? Terrific. I took in 110. Terrific. <laughs> hey, that'll buy a lot of fun. I should say not. This money's going for the American Destitute Fund. Here on Market Street, we want more for our families. Better living, better schools, safer streets, cleaner air, more honesty, more friends, more of every good. Now take a rich man like Mr. Jameson. He owns a company. A couple of companies. <laughs> a couple of companies. <laughs> Votes independent, has a fair golf swing, and hates good music. True enough. <laughs> <laughs> he wants more. This here is Michael O'Shaughnessy. He's been a lot of things. Construction worker, carpenter, furniture finisher. He's crazy about art and cabbage soup. And he wants more. <laughs> Annie Cogner over there, her husband Samuel's on a pension. They sure want more. There's Julia Perez. She wants more for her family. And we want more too. That's my family. Mom's a social worker. Dad's a doctor. Me? I'm a student. College. Rah, rah. You know, it's peculiar that just about every person on Market Street works at his own specialized task. And each of these tasks seem to have no identifiable end product. Like when Mr. O'Shaughnessy works on a building. He knows that his hammering will result finally in the completion of the building. But he may not know who will occupy the building or what it will be used for. Or who will go there. Or what will happen inside. Now, originally, when Stuart Spencer sold this property to Mr. Jameson, he didn't know what Mr. Jameson had in mind. That's a great little lot you got here, Mr. Jameson. A perfect spot for your apartment building. Office building. Office building. Perfect. Perfect. 
I mean, it's so convenient. What a great spot for our lawyers. Doctors. Doctors. A medical building. Clinic. Clinic. Oh, naturally. I mean, this lot just cries out for a clinic to be built on it. Weeps for one. Mr. Spencer's skills were in selling. He would have handled the sale even if Mr. Jameson hadn't told him what the land would be used for. <laughs> it's obvious that people know what their task is and how to do it. But for the most part, their knowledge ends there. In the world at large, as well as on Market Street, there's continuous activity. And all this busyness seems to be chaotic, uncoordinated. A lot of people doing a lot of things, but much of the time not knowing for whom or why. In order for Mr. Jameson to build that clinic, materials had to get to the site. When Steve Mann put gasoline in that lumber truck, he had no idea that his services helped build the clinic. The architect knew how a building gets constructed, but he probably didn't know how to do all the construction himself. He knew he was designing a clinic, but he might not have known which people would occupy it or who would be treated there. All over the place, all over the country, people have been at work at their specialized task, unaware of the contributions they were making to Mr. Jameson's clinic. Little did anyone know that the occupant of this spacious clinic would be none other than Joshua Washington, MD. <laughs> you know, my dad. Once the building was completed, it had to be furnished and supplied. Those supplies were made, tested, packaged, and delivered by people who didn't know which persons would ultimately use them. Where have you been? Thought you were going to help me. <laughs> I got sidetracked. Unique excuse. Dazzling in its ingenuity. Well, I'm here now. Will you listen to that? Now that I've gotten everything put away, and I'm waiting for my first patient, now he gets helpful. Say, Dad, this place is great. I wonder who your first patient's going to be. Ridiculous conduct. Oh! We've got to get you to the doctor, Juanita. Oh. Oh. It's lucky you didn't splat altogether. <laughs> You're the first patient in this new clinic, one buddy. Terrific. <sighs> this will hold you while we take the x-rays. Are you all right? Oh, I'm fine. What's wrong with my husband? It seems he has a fractured patella. Oh, poor Juan. A fractured patella. Patella? Patella? You see? All that activity. The architect's plans. The lumber and steel and pipe and wire. The hammering, sawing and riveting. <laughs> the medical supplies. And all that went into making them and delivering them. My father's education and experience. All those tasks helped to diagnose and treat Juan's broken patella. It'll take six weeks, but Juan is going to be just fine. Oh, thank you, doctor. Don't thank me. Lots of other people deserve thanks. All the people that made it possible. You've got to be kidding. Imagine me finding them, thanking them. Imagine me doing that. <laughs> You who, Mr. O'Shaughnessy? Oh, what is it, Mrs. Perez? I, I'm almost late to work. Oh, but I have to thank you, really. What for? For your part in helping to fix Juan's broken patella. Juan's got a busted patella? Yeah. Oh. What's a patella? Why, it's a... Uh... Never mind. Look, if you're thanking me for that clinic I helped build, that was months ago. Now, sure, they told me what the building was going to be, but that didn't make any difference. Long as I did good work, long as I got paid, that was thanks. What a crazy thing to thank me for. But you helped. 
All I did was put some gasoline in a lumber truck, period. But Dr. Washington said you... Maybe you should thank the guy who drilled for the oil, the guys at the refinery. But Dr. Washington... All I want to do is run a good station. Look, I did it for the money. If I can produce something that other people value, I earn money. And not because I want to fix somebody's patella. I couldn't possibly thank everybody. Just answer me two questions. One... Why did all those people do the things they did? And two, what's a patella? People work because, well, it's like I said before. They want more of things. When Julia pays Dad, and he pays his bills, that will reward all those people for their services. When they do things that other people value, they earn money. And that gets them more for themselves. I get $40 to fix one patella. So if I fix four patellas, let me see. One patella, two patella, three patella, four. But what's a patella? I don't know, but it's driving me crazy. The patella is a flat triangular sesamoid bone developed in the tendon of the quadriceps femoris. Oh, kneecap! Of course, people try other ways of getting things than by working the pay for them. Some try violence. Imagine what the world would be like if we tolerated that. <laughs> hey, Washington! This is my house! So? <laughs> Those are my sprinklers, so get out of here and use your own! But I want to use these, so hop off it, or I'll shatter your remaining patella. <laughs> See? That's how people could and sometimes do use violence to get more. But most of us work to produce something of value. Something that is valuable to us or something that we can exchange because it is valuable to others. Sometimes that means producing a specific object that is valuable. Each of us benefits from the work of thousands of other people. <laughs> and it all happens as if every worker's scattered, specialized task had been coordinated by a central planner. I want to thank my doctor and the nurses and everybody who sent me flowers. And everybody who did things to help, whoever planned it all, coordinated all that know-how, I've got to give credit later. Because right now, I've got to get out of this mess. But really, who can Juan thank? Who coordinated all those millions of workers with their special bits of know-how to produce a useful result like helping Juan get his leg fixed? Who was able to decide what should be produced and by whom? and how to persuade people to do it. Who was it anyway? It's no one. It's everyone. It's each of us in our own special chosen place. And what each person does depends on what other people want. We learn what they want most, what's valuable, by the prices people offer to pay. And seeing those prices as rewards, we each choose the most rewarding thing to do. No one orders us to do it with the right to sell what we produce with our labor and to buy whatever we want, those market prices direct and coordinate our actions. And that's what organized all our scattered, separate, specialized work for Juan's benefit. Right, Juan? <laughs> that's how the market economy operates. It relies on prices and people's rights to their property to motivate and coordinate actions. Of course, sometimes people have questions. Yeah, well... If that's true, then how come it's so hard for teenagers to find jobs? I mean, is that planned? Don't we count? I mean, what are we, meatloaf? Suppose you tell me why some people are paid more than me. I work hard, and what I do is important. It says here, the big corporations decide what to produce and tell us what to buy. No one tells me what to buy. And when we go on vacation, this lake is beautiful and clean. And that one is polluted. Ugh. Why is that? Some things appear unfair and disorganized. To some people, the market system is confusing, chaotic, or unresponsive. We want fast expressways. We get snarled ones. Does that mean we really want snarled ones? <laughs> hmm? Shortages. Remember the gasoline shortage and the natural gas shortage? How come? 
Unemployment, who needs it? Inflation, shortages, high interest. That's planned by that system? All those questions arise either because people keep forgetting that things are scarce, or because they don't understand how prices coordinate their plans, or how the market economy works. Well, this is Market Street, and this is the place to find all that out. <laughs> Do 